mall by myself. I go to malls all by myself. Hello, and welcome to the Upper Valley Mall in Springfield, Ohio. I am your cruise director, Kristen. This was my first solo filming trip, and this will be the first of three malls from this session. This mall was really an experience. As you'll see, its appearance has not been drastically updated since its opening, so it's really a step back in time to take a walk through these corridors. The brown brick walls, the terrazzo floors, and little touches like the indoor street lamps make this mall a real treat for retail history enthusiasts. There are a few places where the ceiling has water spots and minor yellowing from years of indoor smoking, but other than that, it's cared for and clean. I visited this mall on December 27th, 2018, so that's why you see Christmas decorations up. I'd really like to make another visit to see things in their normal state. The center court would be even more striking without the distraction of Santa's village. I was there as the stores were starting to open at 10 a.m., and it was just me and a scattering of mall walkers. This mall opened in 1971 and was developed by, you guessed it, Edward J. DeBartolo, who was in the peak of his mall development years in Ohio. The original anchors were Sears, J.C. Penney, Woolworth, and Reichs, a Dayton-based department store, who occupied the large space off Center Court. Its grand opening was commemorated by a multi-page feature in Springfield's newspaper, billing it as Southern Ohio's most luxurious new mall. For those of you who are not from this area, Springfield is about 30 minutes northeast of Dayton. Dayton Mall, which was featured in our last video, opened the year before this one. The approach was much different with Upper Valley than Dayton Mall, though. The draw of Dayton Mall is that it was big, and the decor has been described by most sources as minimalist and utilitarian. 
Now think back to 1971 and you go from this huge white box that was Dayton Mall to this warm toned space and you can see that the description was probably accurate. The look of this mall was very on trend for when it opened. This was the aesthetic. Reichs was even experimenting with using big, bold geometric sculptures and contrasting primary colors throughout their store. This mall was the premier shopping destination at the time. Salem Mall and Dayton Mall were far enough away that this one held its own and was Clark County's single biggest source of sales tax revenue until 2010. Woolworth left the mall in 1992 when the chain closed and it was replaced by a location of Dayton-based department store Elder Beerman. Elder Beerman remained until 2012 and was replaced for four years by a satellite location of the Boonshoff Museum of Discovery, a science museum mainly for children. This is a really interesting reuse of a large anchor space, similar on a larger scale to what Finley Mall has done with their children's museum. The DeBartolo Group was absorbed by Simon Properties in 1996, and they were one of the factors that led to this mall remaining a time capsule from the 70s. No money was invested in updating or modernizing the property. If you notice, they don't have a food court, which is something that was considered normal and expected by the 2000s. The entry corridor has a cluster of eateries and places that used to be eateries, but no food court. Simon Properties held a $47 million mortgage on the mall. The mall did well until the early part of the 2010s, with a figure from 2011 putting the occupancy level around 94%, only slightly behind the two malls that remained in Dayton that continued to thrive. Simon Malls defaulted on the large mortgage, which far exceeded the value of the property, which was at $20 million in 2012, and it entered receivership. In early 2015, Upper Valley was dealt a potentially fatal blow when J.C. Penney and the anchor that through several name changes had become Macy's announced their departure from the mall within one day of each other. In early 2016, the Boonshoff Museum departed as well, citing lack of traffic as the reason. The mall was purchased in 2015 by its third owner, New Upper Valley Associates, for a price of $2.65 million, and the occupancy level fell to 72%. The five-screen movie theater, which had been a fixture of the mall since its opening, closed in 2017. In 2018, the mall was purchased by the Clark County Land Reutilization Corp for $200,000. The county promptly paid the mortgage, which means it is locally held by the county government free and clear. They have brought in a management consultant to advise on the best course of action going forward. Meanwhile, a new big box complex is opened only a few miles away, which has served only to draw traffic away from the mall and its immediate surroundings. At the time of this video, Sears has announced their impending closure in March and the antique store that occupies the former Elder Beerman will be leaving soon as well. That will leave Upper Valley with no anchors and approximately 10 stores occupied. 
If you notice, many of the spaces that are occupied are places that offer activities versus stores. There's a karate studio and a baseball academy, for instance. They drive traffic and pay leases, but they're not open all the hours that the mall is open. The mall's current decision makers have acknowledged that this property may evolve into a sort of mixed-use community center. This silent, well-preserved monument to the 70s golden age of Midwestern malls sits preserved in amber, and umber, and tan. The warmth of its faux streetlights still stand lighting the way down its increasingly empty corridors. If you squint, you can almost see smartly dressed housewives carrying shopping bags and pushing strollers and imagine the ripple of the long gone fountain. I want to take this opportunity to recommend another channel you might enjoy, Faded Commerce, which you'll find a link to in the description. It's run by friends of ours who take a lot of pride in their content, and if you like our channel, you'll enjoy them too. Coming up next, Northtown Mall in Defiance, Ohio, which has one of the most unique food courts I've ever seen. Thank you to all of you who watch, like, and subscribe to our channel. We cannot do it without you, and you're awesome. Until next time, I'm Kristen, my home-based co-pilot and co-creator is Ron, and we'll see you next time.